بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets us know that he is never pleased with shirk. He's never pleased with associating partners with him. And that's the key for the believer, to stay away from lucky charms, to stay away from all kind of uh, things that divert you from the worship of Allah alone. Any kind of uh, sharing and ibadah. Allah is displeased with in the law Allah yaghfiru and yushriku bi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalik liman yasha verily Allah is not pleased or verily Allah does not forgive that you associate partners with him but he forgives other than that for whomsoever he subhanahu wa ta'ala pleases so tawheed and ta'zim Allah you know worshiping Allah alone and glorifying him that's the work of a believer even if you find other paths that make you feel good, it's not about feeling good. It's not about reading this, indulging in this, drinking this, saying the name of your sheikh or or your marid or your imam or looking at his picture and crying. None of this has any evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah. It doesn't come from Islam. These are un-Islamic practices. And these un-Islamic practices will lead only to the hellfire. And Allah does not forgive the person who indulges in these practices, as we just read the ayat. In Allah, Allah, la So Allah forgives whomsoever He pleases. But He does not forgive shirk. Some of the scholars even say shirk al-askar, even the minor shirk, that if you die upon that, that Allah doesn't forgive it. But the most correct view, bi-idhnillah ta'ala, is that it, in relation to the major shirk. That Allah does not forgive the person who commits, who dies upon the major shirk. This person dies as a disbeliever in Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِمَانُهُمْ بِظُلْمُ That verily he's speaking about the believers here, another characteristic of the awliya. The awliya, the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are protected and loved by Allah. And he said, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمُ That those who believe, so that's iman, believe, and that takes ilm, it takes ilm, it takes knowledge to have iman. وَلَمْ تَلْبِسُوا إِمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمُ And they do not mix their iman, their faith, with shirk. Because... Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains in the Quran that the that the vulm here is not vulm just the, the general type of oppression that we we understand it to mean. But here it means shirk. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in an authentic hadith also explained when Aisha or, or some of the sahaba asked about this, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, this ayat, you know, they said, you know, who from amongst us is not uh, oppress, you know, or does not commit sin and does not oppress themselves. And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned that the vum here it's not as you uh, it's not as you 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 believe or not as you think, but rather here it means shirk. It means associating a partner with Allah or besides Allah. You know, worshiping other than Allah or worshiping with Allah subhanahu wa taala someone else. How can we follow? It seems so logical that every Muslim would understand this. That's what Islam is based upon. Buni in Islam ala khams shahadatan la ilaha illallah. That the first pillar of Islam is bearing witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. And Muhammad is his last prophet and messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the first pillar of Islam. The first pillar of Iman. And tu'minu billahi wal malaikati wa kutubi wa rasuli wal yawm al akhir. The first pillar is, and tu'minu billah. It's to believe in Allah, to worship Allah, to know who Allah alone is. That's the first pillar of Iman. So, how is it that the Muslims have fallen into the other, uh, have fallen into shirk? And simply because of ignorance and ta'wil from false. Uh, distorting of the principles of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because every Muslim will accept that Allah alone should be worshipped. They'll say that on their tongue, but 
The fact of the matter is many of the Muslims or people who associate themselves with Islam, they will go to the graves of the dead. You'll find this in Egypt, you'll find it in Ethiopia, you'll find it uh, almost in all of the Muslim world. You'll find some grave worshippers, people who go make tawaf around the graves, people who sacrifice uh, dead animals, sacrifice their animals on the graves of the dead, people who supplicate to the dead, people who they... Uh, they tawakkul and put their trust in the in the, in the living and the dead. I, I've seen it with my own eyes. I know a particular brother Ashiri Sufi, who said, "Yeah, here's a picture of my sheikh," and he showed me the picture of his sheikh. Look how humble he is. And when he comes in the masjid, the people look like such and such and such and such, and they do such and such and such and such. And one particular individual, this was related to me by one of our ikhwa in Damaj in Yemen, that he mentioned to me. That a particular brother, by min fadl Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah guided him to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from that stuff. And he said, the, the, this particular individual said, you know, I felt like I was weak in my iman because when I looked at the picture of my Sufi sheikh, I didn't cry. A'udhu billah. So, and as Sheikh Salih Suhaimi, he says in, in his explanation, I think is of Asul al-Sitta, he mentioned that he says, uh, Hafizullah Ta'ala, he mentions that some of the, that you'll find, and he's seen this with his own eyes, people who were, uh, had so much fearfulness, so much taqwa, but not taqwa law. They had fearfulness of their saints or the dead. They were humbling themselves before the dead, the similar in the way he humbles himself before Allah. He said he saw that with his own eyes. And this shows you the state of a lot of the Muslims. The weakness in Aqidah, the weakness in Creed. Not knowing what is Shirk and not knowing what's Tawheed. Not knowing what's polytheism and what is monotheism. And another issue related to this is they don't consider those things Ibadah. They say, hey, we just do, I sacrifice uh, animals on the graves of Sheikh so and so or my great grandfather to come closer to Allah. Or I make tawaf and we dance, the swirling dervishes or whatever they're called, they, they dance until they just slobber comes out of their mouth, and they do this to come closer to Allah. They don't consider it worship. Or they consider it such a high level of worship, some of them. But where is this in relation to the Qur'an? Where is this in relation to the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam? We don't find this. We don't find the Prophet wasallam doing these practices. We don't find the, the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum majma'in doing these practices. We don't find the Tabi'een doing these practices. We don't find the Itba'a Tabi'een rahimahumullah ta'ala jami'an. We don't find them doing these things. But in fact we find these from people who come up with these practices later on. And they think they're coming closer to Allah. But this is not qurb. This is not qurb illa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that requires following the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu That requires ikhlas, sincerity to Allah. And following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu But you won't find those practices. So they don't regard that as ibadah. But who had the same argument? The mushrikeen of Quraysh. The mushrikeen of Quraysh. They had the same argument where they said what? They said, La yuqarribuna La yuqarribuna illallahi illa zulfa. They said that, that when they talked about their idols, they said, we don't worship them, or we worship them only that they will bring us closer to Allah. You know, to bring us much closer to Allah. So they use them as intercessors. This is the problem where the problem lies. Because many of those sects, like the Ahbash, like many, uh, like many of the Naqshbandis and the Diobandiyas and the uh, other sects of uh, Sufi uh, Turk, they believe that they're coming closer to Allah, and this intercession intercession is is pleasing to Allah, and that they are not clean enough or pure enough to worship Allah alone directly, or to make repentance to Allah alone directly, and that they should cry when they see Shirk uh, Sheikh Nazim or these other individuals. But no, you won't find this from the Qur'an, you won't find it from the, from the Sunnah. Why not worship Allah alone? Isn't this what the, the argument of the Catholics? Isn't, aren't they the ones who go and confess to their priests? Aren't they the ones who have many saints, saints for this day and saint for that day and saint so-and-so? 
that's the Muslims are not to follow those those the people from before us. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Let tabi'oon sunnah min kana kablukum hudwa kudda tibul kudda hatta lo dakhlu jahr dab la dakhul tamuhu." قالوا فما قال اليهود والنصارى قال فمن صلى الله عليه وسلم. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in this authentic hadith, he said, "You will follow the ways of the people who came before you." Footstep or hand span, hand span by hand span, footstep by footstep, or or arm span by arm span. Even if they fu- uh, went into the hole of a lizard, a dub, you would enter it. And then the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they asked, "Who are they, Ya Rasulullah?" Or he said, uh, "They asked uh, uh, the Jews and the Christians, Ya Rasulullah." And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam responded by saying, "For men, who else? Who else?" So we, as a ummah, would be plagued with shirk, with the worship of other than Allah, just like the nations before us, and we would follow them. We follow them in every respect. The Prophet sallallahu said, "Men minhum." Whoever follows a people, then he is from them. So when we get our, uh, we want to have the 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 dress. We want to have the haircuts. In the land of Tawheed, we even find this. We find the youth with mohawks. We find the youth with emo dress and emo hair. And doing the same characteristics, following them so much so that even the practices of homosexuality, they try to legitimize. This is far from Islam. It has no... Islam refers to these things. These are major sins. It's a sinful whole... um, Nations were destroyed for these these practices, but the people now they follow those people who came before them. They follow new ways, and they commit shirk with Allah. So do not follow anything except Ahlul Tawheed. Be with Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Follow Ahlul Sunnah. Follow the way of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions, radiyallahu taala anhum, as we were ordered. Wa sallallahu wasallam ala Nabiya Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم